Hey, so this is another video by Pet Rock. Today I'm working on my 06 Harley Night Train. It's an FX STBI. Today I'm going to be replacing the rear tire. As you can see, I've gotten it pretty well down to uh, to bare metal. The rear tire on this bike is a uh, radial, so it's got steel belts uh, inside. And no, I don't do burnouts. I just ride my bike a lot. This is my daily driver. It's got about yeah 76,000 miles and change. 06 was the first year they came out with a 200 millimeter rear tire. I think they're still using it, I'm not sure. Removing the rear tire is a little bit different than it was on previous years because of the brake caliper being pretty much inside the uh, well of the tire. So I need to remove the tire uh, and get a new one. So for those of you who don't think that you can actually use the entire tire with a 200 millimeter rear end, just check this out. There's like maybe, I think that's about a half inch of virgin tire on the back of this bike. So the first thing you gotta do is you gotta jack the bike up. Uh, I'm using a Craftsman motorcycle jack. Uh, I've had it since I bought this bike back in 06 uh, when I bought it new and, and hasn't had any problems with it. Anyway, so once you get it in the air, I can't stress enough putting tie down straps onto uh, the bike to make sure it's secure. Uh, because you're gonna be wiggling around and also changing the weight distribution once you remove the rear tire, uh, you don't want this bike falling off the jack. So you wanna have it strapped down nicely so it doesn't fall off. So the way I strap it down is I take a towel and I put it behind the headlight, snake it over top all the wires, and then I put my tie down strap over top that towel. Uh, this makes it so the tie down strap doesn't crimp the wires and potentially damage them. So I wanted to make a note of how I have this bike jacked up. On soft tails, there's a shock here and a shock there that actually go below the frame rail. You don't want to have the floor jack so far back that your floor jack is holding the bike up from the shocks. So you just want it just barely ahead of the shocks like it is here. Harley does make, uh, and aftermarket also makes uh, little plastic rails that you can put on the frame in order to protect it, I guess. However, this jack stand, it has rubber mounts on the top, so I don't have to worry about that. So if you go by the service manual, the service manual is gonna have you undo this lock nut here and move this bolt out, which basically will make this uh, the whole front axle be able to move forward and back. But then when you have to put it all back together again, you have to realign the rear tire. You don't need to do any of that. This, you can actually remove the rear tire without affecting the adjustment on the belt or anything like that. So anyway, so the first thing you need to do is you need to remove the uh, rock guards from around the belt. There's half inch little bullet castle nut things. There's one nut right back in here. You can see the head right here that you need to, to loosen. You don't need to remove it all the way in order to get this bottom plastic guard off. It's also a half inch. Here's where ratchet wrenches come in handy. Okay, here's where the tricky part of this job comes in. It's really not that tricky, but some people do tend to have a little bit of a problem with it. And that is removing the rear brake caliper. Unlike other models where the tire is narrower, on these 200 millimeter rear end Harleys that came this way from the factory, the brake caliper and the rotor are actually inset into the rim. So you can't just drop the tire like on other models and have no problems with clearance. In this case, you have to remove the brake caliper. To remove the caliper, you need to remove this bolt and this bolt right here. Now, depending on what type of exhaust you have, your exhaust may prevent those bolts from coming out freely. This top bolt here is fit relatively short, so that one might come out pretty easily, but the one on the bottom is actually about, I'd say three inches long if memory serves. You either have to remove your exhaust in order to remove that bottom bolt, or you can just, uh, you loosen up your exhaust bolts a little bit and pull the exhaust out slightly. If you have a shorty exhaust where the exhaust doesn't come out this far, you can just freely remove this uh, uh, bolt without any problems. In my case, the uh, exhaust comes out and it, it gets in the way. This is like the sixth or seventh time I've replaced the rear tire on this bike, and each time before that, I've done the method where I've pulled the exhaust out slightly by just loosening the bolt on the front and loosening the bolt mounting bolt on the bottom and uh, pulling it out. This has worked very well, and I've had no problems, no exhaust leaks, no nothing. But since I've done it so many times, I'm starting to feel like I'm pressing my luck. So I'm gonna, this time, I'm going to remove the exhaust completely, and I'm also gonna replace the uh, exhaust gaskets. You don't need to replace the exhaust, the exhaust gaskets on your bike unless it's, they're actually damaged or worn or crumbling. Okay, once you got the exhaust off, it might be a good idea to look inside the uh, exhaust port and have a look at the uh, valve stems. 
They should be white, similar to those. And a little bit of blackness around them is okay. Uh, you don't want to see them shiny or uh, full of oil. That means you have a valve stem leak. It means you need to take the top end of your motor apart and get new valve stem seals. Um, it's not an impossible job, not a hard job necessarily. It's just annoying. Uh, you can also see after, I don't know, I guess six or seven times of me wiggling the exhaust in and out, the exhaust uh, uh, gaskets still look pretty good, but I'm still going to replace them. So now that the exhaust is off, I've got all this room to work in here. So the first thing I would advise doing is to take a paint scraper or similar and put it between the pad and the rotor and try to pry out a little bit on it just to compress the piston slightly. You want to do it both in the outside and the inside pads. Be sure not to gouge your rotor. It doesn't take a lot, just move it a little bit and also do, the do it from the bottom. So now to make removing the caliper a little bit easier, you want to remove your brake pads. And that's done by removing these two bolts right here. They are a quarter inch 12 point socket. Once you have them loose like that, there will be spring pressure on them from the pads and the spring that's back here built into the caliper. So uh, um, they won't come out that easily. You may need to use uh, some kind of prior or just use a pair of pliers. Just try not to mar them up too bad and they'll come right out. Just even pressure and they'll come out like that. You want to keep track of which side is which because these only go in one way. They may look similar like they will go in uh, two different ways, but they will only go in one way. So keep track of which way they came out and put them back in the same way. Next you remove the two mounting bolts for the caliper. They are 12.10 millimeter. The short one goes on top. Just keep track of which bolts are which. They're different lengths. And the long one is the one on the bottom. So as you can see, this one's pretty long and it would not have come out if the exhaust was in place. I would have had to pull out the exhaust about a half inch or so in order for me to uh, get access. So now the caliper is loose. You can just slide it out of the way and rest it on top of your passenger foot peg. Okay, now we move over to the left side of the bike. Remove the uh, safety pin for the rear castle nut. It's fairly easy to remove. You just take a screwdriver and pull up and there it goes. Just make sure you find it when it bounces on the floor and goes off into the nether region of your garage. There's mine. So next you get a 24 millimeter or a 15 16th socket and spin this castle nut off. If this castle nut starts to spin with the shaft inside, uh, with the axle inside, just get another 15 16 socket or another 24 millimeter socket and put it on the other end of the axle where there's also a hex head and that'll stabilize the axle as you spin this off. So these are on here with some force so be careful uh, and don't knock the bike off the stand when you loosen this up. Might help to use a breaker bar or a cheater bar. And remove it all the way and include the spacers for the belt adjustment. Okay I found to remove the uh, axle it's easiest to get some of the pressure off of it from the tire. So I usually put a, a jack underneath, just a little bit of pressure. You don't want a lot, of, a, a lot. you don't want to, again, lift the bike up off the jack. Just a little bit of pressure, just enough to loosen the weight on the uh, axle shaft. And you just want to pop it, just about an inch or so, like that. So the axle pops out a little bit like this, so that it's now this bolt right here is not pushing against the axle. But it means you can push it forward slightly so that it'll loosen up the belt on the other side. Okay, now that you've got the axle pushed forward a little bit on both sides, you'll have a lot more slack on the belt. Uh, so what you wanna do is you wanna put the uh, bike into neutral so that the rear tire will spin freely. So now we need to remove the belt and you do that by pulling this way on the belt and rotating the tire backwards. Making sure not to get your fingers caught between it and the uh, sprocket. That's it. So now that the belt is off, we want to take the weight off the axle again and remove the axle completely. So when you remove the axle, there are, uh, is one spacer on each side of the uh, tire. The long one is on the left side and the other one is right here, the silver part. Uh, when you pull the axle, those will most likely just drop. So just uh, make sure that you keep an eye on them and they don't uh, go off into no man's land. Okay, now with the weight of the rear tire held up by the floor jack, uh, I can just pull out with some mild force, pull out the axle. Like 
like that. Now the rear wheel is completely loose. You also want to remove this bracket right here for that the uh, caliper was attached to. Now the tire is completely free, you can lower it on the floor jack and take the rest of the way out. So once you have the wheel off, you also want to check the wheel bearings and make sure that they rotate nice and smooth, that there's no sticking points, um, that it's not making any noise, that there's no lateral or uh, vertical or horizontal movement. If there is, then that means you need new wheel bearings. And so what you also want to do is you want to inspect your axle. So you want to clean off any grease or any anti-seize that's on it and then inspect it for any wear marks where the bearings are, for example. If you can feel it with your fingernail, that means this axle will be garbage and you need to get a new one. So another thing I like to do is after I've taken the axle off, I like to put the uh, parts that were on it back on in the same order that they came off because sometimes getting the new tire put on can, can take a little while. In my case, it's actually about one in the morning and this isn't gonna get done until maybe tomorrow if I get time before going to work. So I don't want the, the parts getting kicked around or whatever. You have the small spacer, then you have the large spacer, then you have the adjuster washer thing, then you have the washer for the axle nut, then you have the axle nut itself. And uh, now you just take the wheel to your local shop, have them put on the new tire, and uh, we'll be right back. Okay, through the magic of video editing, uh, I now have a new tire on my uh, on my rim. It's a Metzler ME880 255R17. It's also a good idea to clean your wheel before putting it on. But since my bike is so dirty already, um, and I'm probably going to clean it maybe in the next week or two, if I get around to it, and my cat Benny, he might help. We have wildlife. So now we're going to remount the tire and uh, the order of operations is essentially the reverse of what you did to remove it uh, with some slight differences. So next you want to get the tire back up on the jack and in, inside the swing arm. And you just want to jack it up so the hole for the bearing is about lined up with the hole for the uh, swing arm. So once you have it up, double check that your belt is still free. You don't want it pinched in here or anything like that. Next, you want to reinstall the brake caliper bracket. You want to clean it off, make sure there's nothing, no gunk or damage or wear. Make sure it's not cracked, of course. You want to double check that this uh, little rubber insert is still intact and not worn off. Otherwise, your brakes are going to chatter when you apply the brakes. That little rubber insert is basically a little bit of a shock absorber to prevent the brake rotor from vibrating as you're riding down the road. You also want to wipe off and clean the mounting, the mating surface. Now what I like to do is uh, add a little bit of brake caliper grease. You can pick this up at any uh, local auto parts store. Take a little bit of it and just put it on the rubber nub inside of this bracket for two reasons. One, it aids in the uh, installation so it'll just slide on easier. Two, it'll help prevent the rubber from getting all cracked and worn out from uh, repeated heat cycles and things like that. Now the reason you want to use brake caliper grease as opposed to uh, like regular chassis grease or other types of greases is that uh, brake caliper grease will not damage rubber. Standard chassis grease will deteriorate rubber over time. It'll degrade it. Uh, you don't want to do that. You want to keep this rubber intact for as long as possible. Knowing Harley, this, this thing's probably like 400 bucks. So just take a little grease and put it in there. That's it. So now you just take the bracket, snake it through, slide it into place. Try to line it up a little bit with the end of this bolt so you don't have to keep moving it back and forth when you try to reinstall the uh, axle. So before you start putting the axle in, you're gonna need to put the uh, large spacer in on the left side of the tire. Um, if you start sliding the axle in, you're not gonna be able to get enough room in here to be able to insert this uh, without bending out the uh, swing arm. So the way I do it is I just set it up, put this in, and then put a screwdriver in to line it up and make sure that it doesn't uh, fall out as I'm trying to get the axle shaft in. Next, you want to put a nice coating of anti-seize on the smooth part of the shaft. Not on the thread, but on the smooth part. The reason for that is because this metal is not the same as the bearing metal, is not the same as this uh, metal here, nor is it the same as the tube inside the tire that this rides inside. So dissimilar metals have a tendency to weld themselves together. Anti-seize is used to prevent things like that. So, so as per the service manual, you put a light coating of anti-seize on, doesn't take a lot, and you just spread it out over the entire axle shaft. Okay, now that you got anti-seize over your axle shaft, you want to start putting things back together again. So you put the washer for the adjuster, you start sliding the axle into place, 
take the small spacer, slide it into place, get it hooked onto the axle shaft, move the tire into place. So now we have to put the belt on. So like before, we don't want the axle all the way out. We want it like this so that it can move forward, like that. So you want to move the jack out of the way because you're going to need to rotate the tire a little bit. So you want to take the belt just like you took it off, put it into, make it sure it goes into the grooves in here, rotate the tire, and you're done. So now you want to put the jack back underneath again, just for a second. Take a little bit of the pressure off the axle and push it the rest of the way through. Now you can remove the jack. So now you need to install the adjuster washer. There's a little notch in it right here. That notch needs to match up with this end of this bolt. Same thing on the other side. You want the notch on that side to also be lined up. You want it to be that way right now actually while you're trying to set everything together. So you want to push the axle back, slide the washer on. Like that. Next, get the regular washer, put that on. Now take the castle nut and put that on. So now you just want to tighten up the axle nut. Again, it's a 24 millimeter or a 15 16 uh, socket. Just tighten it up as it starts getting stiff and start using a uh, torque wrench. The torque spec for this is 60 to 65 foot pounds. Uh, I like to take torque specs and cut them in half, so 62 and a half or 62. Once you get it torqued down to whatever spec it is you want, you check to see if the hole in the axle shaft lines up with the castle nut holes. If it doesn't, then continue tightening it slightly, just enough to get the hole to line up. You don't want to go above 65 foot-pounds, otherwise you'll be putting too much of a bind on the bearings and you'll burn them up. So in this case, I could probably twist it just a little bit more just to get it to where I need it to be. So I'll take my breaker bar. So make sure that the wheel still spins freely and then it tracks nice. Next you want to take the spring clip that you took off earlier, slide the straight edge through the hole. Okay, now you have to put in the belt guards. I always like to put the bolts back where they came from so they're easy to find. So that this part right here hooks into a nut that was still over here, so you just slide it in. Catch on the nut, push down, and it's in. Loosely put the bottom nut the bottom bolt I should say in. Now you take the top, take the bolts out of it, and you slide this through from the back to the front and loosely put the bolts in by hand. Again, don't strip them. And you take a half inch socket and tighten everything down. So what I do is I press on this bottom plastic part so it seats itself within this nut over here and I tighten down the back one first. Then I take a, take a half inch ratchet or a half inch ratcheting wrench. Drop it on the floor. Realize you're tightening the wrong way. Snug it down. Push down on the back, on the front I should say. Tighten up the back one. The wrench on the back of the bolt and tighten it down. So there isn't a torque spec for these uh, bolts. The service manual literally just says tighten them. There's nothing else. So just snug them down real good. So now we got to reinstall the brake caliper. Before doing that, you want to inspect the brake caliper pistons, making sure that they're not damaged or dirty or anything like that. It would be a good idea to get a can of brake clean and spray out the center of this, wipe it out with a good rag before reinstalling. You also want to depress the pistons slightly. It'll make installing the pads that much easier. Unless you're replacing the pads with new ones, you don't need to bottom them out. You just need to move them in a little bit just to make your existing pads slide in easier. So you take your bolt, just take a little dab, that much, that's it, that's all you need. Slide the brake caliper into place, slide the bolt into place, screw it in a couple threads, apply a little anti-seize to the threads of the, of the top bolt, screw it into place, so then you just tighten it down, it's a 10 millimeter 12 point. The torque spec for these are 28 to 38 foot-pounds, or just snug them down real good. Don't go too far, because again, the caliper is only aluminum, you don't want to strip the bolts out. So next you want to clean and inspect the slide pins for your uh, brake pads. Uh, you want to make sure that there's no pitting and no uh, um, abnormal wear marks. In this case, there is a little bit of pitting 
in the center part here on both pins and there's also a little bit of wear here where it looks like it's actually worn down to I guess uh, some kind of copper or brass material underneath. So I need to replace these. I'm going to install them now anyway and uh, I'll order a new set and install them separately. So you also want to inspect your brake pads, make sure that they're in good condition and there isn't any abnormal wear. In addition, the round part of the brake pad, so you notice the top is rounded and the bottom is not. The round part on the rear goes up. This is the pad on the outside. This pad right here is the pad on the inside. You can tell by the extra tab. So like with any brake job, you want to put a little bit of brake caliper grease on the wear points where the pad slides against metal within the caliper. And that's on this rounded edge here and this edge here. You don't want to apply too much grease because then when you're sliding the brake pad in, you don't want to get it on your rotor or on the brake pad material itself. In addition, you want to coat the smooth part, just the smooth part of the slide pin with brake caliper grease. Give it a good coating. You don't have to goop it up, just enough to coat. Next, you want to take your pad, place it against the rotor, and slide it into place inside the caliper. Then take your slide pin and put it into the top hole, making sure that it catches on the brake pad. Next, you want to lube up the uh, inboard brake pad the same way you did the outboard one. Again, with the rounded point going on the top, you want to slide your brake pad against the rotor, slide it into place, and then push the pin in all the way to hold it in place. Next, you want to take the other slide pin and just coat the smooth part with brake caliper grease. Then you slide your hand or a small uh, screwdriver or wrench in here and push against the brake pad to push it in and then slide the pin in under the first one. Then do the same thing on the back side. So before pushing the pins in all the way and screwing them in, you want to take a little bit of anti-seize and put a little blob right on the threads. See, just a little bit. You don't have to put a whole ton of it on there. As we screw in the bolt, the threads will spread out the anti-seize for you. So now you take your quarter inch 12 point socket and tighten down the bolts. Again, you want to use anti-seize on these because these are very small bolt, uh, bolt heads and you don't want to strip them if they get stuck. You tighten these bolts down to 180 to 200 inch pounds, not foot pounds, inch pounds, uh, which basically just means snug them down real good. Again, they're small, you don't want to strip them. So now let's get the brake caliper back together again. Uh, it's a good idea to pump the brakes a few times uh, to get the pistons to squeeze the brake pads back together again. Install your exhaust. As I said earlier, the installation for your uh, exhaust depends entirely on the exhaust that you have. If you're still running the stock exhaust, it's going to be different than if you're running an aftermarket pipe. One thing that is the same is that you want to install it from and tighten everything down from the cylinder heads outwards. So you want to uh, bolt up the exhaust manifold bolts first then the next set of bolts on the exhaust pipe and then the, uh, outwards toward the tip. This will ensure that everything is lined up properly. You also don't want to tighten it down until you have uh, at least all the bolts started by hand. Okay, now that you got the exhaust on, you're almost done. Uh, next thing you want to do is you want to take a nice clean cloth and some brake clean. And spray down the uh, cloth and then wipe down your brake rotor, both sides. Rotate it a little bit to clean up any grease you may have gotten on it when installing it or your wheel guy when he was trying to put the wheel on if he sprayed any lube on it by accident that'll get it off. Next you take same cloth, clean side, spray down a little bit more of it and give the tire a good wipe, a wipe down. You want to make sure that there's no oil, anti-seize or grease or anything like that on the tire before you actually go for your first ride. Even though you may have been extremely careful, uh, you may have gotten even just a little speck of whatever contaminant on the tire, including the lube that the tire guy uses to get the tire on. The brake cleaner will also uh, add the added benefit of removing some of the film that is on the tire that comes from the factory. You're not going to get all of it off. You don't need to wipe it down like forever in a day. Just give it a good quick once over and then you're good to go. Uh, then take the bike up for a leisurely ride. Don't go hard on it for about 100 miles. Let the uh, tire break in a little bit and wear through the remainder of that coating that came from the factory. I've literally seen guys getting new tires put on, uh, take their bike out for the first time and spin out and uh, lose control because the tire was too slippery and they were, they were trying to work it too hard. 
just be careful and take it easy and then uh, enjoy your new tire. So uh, I hope this helped you out. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comments section below. If you liked what you saw, click the like button. If you want to see more videos like this one, uh, click subscribe.